Equilibrium is a term you'll come across quite a lot in your study of sciences. There's a physical equilibrium, which in physics we stand as a balance between forces. In biology, you have a, an equilibrium between life and death, again, a balance. But in chemistry, we also have an equilibrium, a balance between forward and reverse rates of reaction. Let's start by looking at a physical system. What I mean by that is a physical change. And in this particular one, I'm gonna look simply at the evaporation of water. So in my beaker, I have water liquid down below and up above, I have the gas. The reaction can be summarized by the following. And as the reaction proceeds, the molecules of water escape from the liquid and move out into the room. And I would notice a dropping of level of the water that's present. And eventually through the course of time, all the water would evaporate. And that could be represented by this graph, mapping either the mass or the volume of water in the beaker. But over time, it would eventually drop to zero. In my second beaker, I put a lid on the top. It's what we call a closed system. And so as our water molecules evaporate, they can't leave. Again, the reaction appears to be in the same direction, a forward direction with the liquid turning into a gas. As the number of water molecules increases, eventually we reach a saturation point where it can't hold anymore. And as a water molecule evaporates, one falls back down into the liquid and condenses. This balance between forward and reverse, we call an equilibrium. And it's represented by a two-way arrow, indicating that it's evaporating and condensing at the same rate. A graph of its mass versus volume would indicate there would always be some water present in the beaker. It would never reach zero, but eventually it would level off and no longer change, even though it was still evaporating. A few points to note about equilibrium. First of all, you require a closed system. Otherwise, your products can't reform into the reactants. Secondly, both forward and reverse reactions are still happening. A reaction has not stopped. It's still proceeding both forward and reverse. It's just happening at the same time and at the same rate. The macroscopic or big picture properties remain the same. In this case, mass and volume remain constant. And finally, equilibrium can be reached from either starting with products or reactants. What that means in this case is I could have also reached equilibrium by starting with steam or water vapor present in my beaker, and eventually I would reach a balance between the liquid and the gaseous state. So it doesn't matter whether I start with reactant or with product, or with some mixture of the two. Let's take this now and put it to a chemical example. The reaction I'm going to study is shown with phosphorus trichloride and chloride glass forming phosphorus pentachloride. And I provided some diagrams of what those molecules look like. Again, they're present in a closed beaker. Now, initially when I start, I have only the reactant molecules. So I'm showing this on a concentration graph. The green indicates my reactant and the purple, my product. I'm also plotting a graph of the rate of the reaction versus time. The green representing the forward reaction and the purple, the reverse reaction. Initially, this reaction can only proceed in the forward direction as I only have reactant molecules. There aren't any products. This is shown then by that one way arrow. As the reaction proceeds and I start to make product, the concentrations of the reactants will begin to drop. That drop in concentration then results in a slowing down of the forward reaction. Simultaneously, the concentrations of my products starts to increase. As a result, the rate of the forward rea reverse reaction also starts to increase. So my arrow is now going to be replaced with two. The forward reaction has become a little bit slower because the reactants are being used up, but the reverse reaction is starting to pick up in speed as there is more and more product present. And we know from collision theory, if we have more of a substance present, the greater the chances are of a collision. Eventually I'll reach a point in time when from the macroscopic point of view, the reaction looks like it's completely finished the concentration of products and reactants will remain constant, but I'll have both product and reactant present. Also at that point in time, 
the rate of the reverse and the rate of the forward reactions will eventually match each other. And this is my state of equilibrium. And again, I represent it by a two-way arrow. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about the process of equilibrium and how it affects the rates of both the forward and reverse reactions over time. Again, if you like this, give me a thumbs up and a comment would always help. Bye.